And I want to get started. We're going to start a new series called Famous Last Words. And this is going to carry us to Easter. And we're talking about the famous last words of Jesus throughout this series. So before we get started, let's pray. Father, we're just so grateful this morning for each person that is willing to give of their time and their finances and, and of their self to serve you like you've called us to do. We thank you for each representative of the Gideons International here and they pray that you bless them and their family and their ministry. Allow us to be a part of helping to bless them. Lord, also for each member of Valley Church that takes out their time uh, and their, their resources and funds to, to support this ministry, Lord, we praise you for each one of those. Lord, this morning right now, though, I'd like for you to clear our hearts and our minds for just a few moments and allow us to focus solely on your words and that you would speak to our hearts this morning in a powerful way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so famous last words is, is pretty common. You hear oh, these are famous last words. So we're going to look into Jesus' famous last words. You think how important the last words or the last conversations or the last meetings that he had before the cross. We, we talk about the, the, the supper with the, with the disciples. It's the last supper. We talk about the communion. We still do communion today. and We do this in remembrance of him because of those things. So we're going to be looking at Luke 23. 32 through 33. And we're going to look here that two other men, both criminals, mind you, remember that, also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him. Along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And then Luke 23, 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. How many of you have heard that scripture a thousand times before in, in a church? All of you raise your hand a thousand times. How many of you really think about the magnificent power of these few words, this small prayer that he prayed? There's a significance of this prayer that we don't even think about. Father, forgive them, for they know what they're doing. The first thing that was significant about this prayer was Jesus was fulfilled prophecy. He was, I don't want to say he fulfilled, he was, he literally was fulfilled prophecy himself. If you look at Isaiah 53, 12, it says he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors for he bore the sins of many and he made intercessions for the transgressors how many of you we've talked about this many a times how many of you when you're in the middle of being wronged by someone how many of you in here live a perfect life and you never get wronged by anyone Ooh. How many of you have a perfect life and ever since you accept Jesus it's been easy and it's been flowers and rose petals your whole life None? That's our expectation though, right? God, why am I going through this trouble, this trial in my life? Why me, Lord? That woe is me, Lord. But he was beaten and, and broke. He, well, not one bone was broken, but they tried to break his spirit. And he was hung on a cross and bleeding. And he never once said, why me, But he did say, Father, forgive them, for they know what they're, not what they're doing. Then another thing that Jesus did significantly with this prayer was he modeled the importance of prayer in every situation. He modeled the importance of prayer in every situation. Matthew 6, 9 says this is how you should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Y'all know the rest of it? Remember the part in there that says, Forgive us as we forgive our transgressors. Even to his death, he's modeling the importance of praying for the people that transgress against you. And he also said, what good is it if you love those who love you? Even demons 
understand that aspect. Not demons. I'm just that's that's the Benfield translation. Uh, <laughs> but to love those that hate you. Now, if there's a message that's relevant to our world right now, to our country right now, to the people that try to tear each other apart in social media and try to try to point fingers, this one's wrong and that one's wrong, and depending on which side of the aisle politically you fall, and all this hatred that's just spewed daily. If there's a message from Christ for us that's relevant right now, it's this message that we love those that we differ from. What happened to being able to, to just agree to disagree over something? Why does it have to be someone's horrible or evil because they don't believe the same way you believe about something and you have to tear them down and call them names? but to love those and pray for those that transgress against you. How many times, and since social media is a big thing, how many times do we get caught up in the blah, 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 and the little comment in the back of the comment, and then you're back over here, and how many times instead of just doing that and trying to be right, because why? We always want to be right. We're right. Because God said we're right. How many times have you just stopped and prayed? for the person instead of arguing with them. Try that. Let's talk about another thing that significance of this prayer is God revealed man's greatest need with this prayer. Our greatest need as human beings you know, we think is money, we think is a house, we think it's clothing, we think it's the nice car, we think it's all those things that we that's what we strive for and we 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 live our lives for all these cool things, but Jesus revealed our greatest need. Matthew twenty six, twenty eight says, This is my body, the covenant for which is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Our real need is a spiritual one. And we talked about this with all these things going on, with all these shootings and all this stuff that we want to point fingers and blame people, that, but the, the blame is evil. It's the devil. And the cure is Jesus and the cross. Our real need as people, as humans, as members of this church, as individuals is cross the Christ in him crucified Billy Graham preached one sermon his whole life the cross of Christ Paul said I am nothing that is the cross the cross of Christ that's what we need it's a spiritual need so the significance of this prayer is he fulfilled prophecy the importance of always modeling prayer Jesus always modeled a prayer he revealed our greatest need <coughs> forgiveness of sins is our greatest need it's a spiritual need for they do not know you ignorance doesn't always equal innocence Matthew 9, 6 says, So that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. What did the one, there's two criminals, right? One on either side. And one says, Father, he said, remember me. At the last minute, he humbled himself. And, and Jesus said, you'll be with me today in paradise. And the other Still turned his nose up. So let's start with our points here. Point one, uh, I was just making sure that we have got plenty of time. Uh, so what do we learn from this prayer? When someone hurts you, the first thing you're supposed to do is pray. When someone hurts you, pray. This is what Jesus modeled for us. Pray for those who hurt you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Luke 6, 28. 
And here is the lesson that's hard about this one, is your prayer may not change that person. Isn't that what we always pray for? Lord, that you would fix them because there's just something totally wrong with them and they're broken. How many of you are going to be honest and say that's, maybe not those exact words, but if you really break it down, isn't that what you're saying? Lord, or if you want to really admit to it, a lot of times, you know, you get passed by that idiot in traffic and you pray that his tire goes flat or the cops pull him over. Yeah. Is that a Jesus prayer? I don't think that's what Jesus would want us to pray. I think that's the wrong point that we're trying to make for. But the prayer doesn't necessarily change them, but it will always change me if I'm doing it right. You know, it's real easy to get, and this is me too, so I'm, this is confession time. You know, confession's good for the soul. It's real easy to get caught up in the moment and get mad at someone when you're right in the middle of getting hurt and you're like, blah, 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 blah. And then a few minutes later, for me, it usually happens when I remember forgive like I'm forgiven and I start thinking about all the stuff that I've been forgiven for and how that I don't even deserve to be up here preaching or I don't even deserve, you know, all of the blessings that I have and, and all those times that God said, you're forgiven, you're forgiven. And I'm, it's so hard to stay mad at that moment when I remember I'm supposed to forgive another person the way that God's forgiven me. And so... That brings me back down to, to, to the ground level sometimes. Maybe I'm up there mad for, I don't know, I mean, how many of you are married? So it could be three or four days. <laughs> you see, I finally got a laugh at that. That was supposed to be funny. <laughs> you know, three or four days you could be mad about something and you're like not talking and you're just walking. You got that little grunt going on. I can't believe I'm starting next time. <laughs> And then finally you get, you, you get your eyes opened by something you read in the Bible or you're doing a devotional and God has this way of just like smacking you like, hey, idiot, you're supposed to forgive others the way I forgave you. That's the one to remember. But prayer, if you're doing it right, doesn't change, necessarily change the person, but it will always change you. Lord, teach me to love the way you loved I don't understand that type of love. I don't understand loving your enemy. I don't understand praying for those that hurt you. I can't understand how that even works because I'm human. Lord, teach me to love like that. Teach me to lay down my life for my spouse like you laid down your life for me. Teach me to love and serve the way you loved and serve. See how those prayers will change you? And pretty soon, we're not as mad anymore, especially when we start counting our own sins. Oh, well, you forgave me for this and for this and just yesterday and just this morning and just five minutes ago. Matthew 5, 43 through 44 says, You have heard that it said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Imagine how the world would change if just those people that claim to be Christians would live this one passage. Now we talk about, a lot of times, we spend a lot of times at church and Bible studies and other things, we spend a lot of time trying to gain knowledge and, and read passages and memorize scriptures and, and all those things. But I would challenge you to live one this week. Live this one this week. You could know a thousand, you could have a thousand memorized, but if you're not living any of them, it's not doing you or anybody else any good. But live this one this week. The next point that we want to make when, when, uh, when we pray is that our prayer is for restoration. Not for demolition. 
pray the tires fall, tires fall off of the car that just cut you off. That's not the right prayer. Pray for restoration. God, we don't... Here's a, here's a, here's a prayer that's, that's easy to implement in the car situation since that's very, uh, very common around here is when somebody cuts you off or whatever. Lord, help them. They're obviously in a hurry. Help them get to where they're going safely so they don't hurt anyone or themselves. And most of all, Lord, that they would know you in whatever way, shape, or form. Right? That's a good easy prayer to try. And there's, there's other prayers that you could uh, uh, pray for those people at your workplace that you have trouble with. Help me, Lord, to be the, the witness that I should be to them. Help me show them your ways instead of arguing and pointing fingers and getting mad, but help them, help them show you to them. Use me, Lord. This was the type of prayer, famous last words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Pray for restoration. T Romans 12, 17 says, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. So another challenge this week. Can you live this passage this week? Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not repay evil for evil. <coughs> Romans 12. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Um, famous last words, Father, forgive them. Why is forgiveness of others so important, you might ask? Most of us have this thing that we just can cut people off. You're done, you're out of my life. Like... But then we hold a grudge. And we don't really forgive. And then who's the one that's hurting and struggling over that relationship? Is it them? Who's the one that's grieving? And who's the one that's always thinking about it every time you see their Facebook post? Oh, can you believe they posted that on Facebook? You're the one hurting. Jesus taught us that, that forgiveness for others is important, not just for us, because we're supposed to forgive like he forgave us, but it also frees us to love. You know, if you have a lot of what they call baggage, it starts to mess with good relationships that you have, because then you've got this wall built up because, well, I'm not letting anybody else hurt me like that because I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not going to do it. I can't get past that one thing, so I can't trust this other person. And then we don't ever develop those deep relationships with people that we should develop. Like, you know, God wants us to have deep relationships like we're brothers and sisters. Right? Like, like we have people we can go to and talk to about our struggles and our trials. And they can pray for us. And we can pray for them. We did that two weeks ago here. And, and it was awesome. And a lot of you, like, that was the best service I'd ever been to. And, and I think that's great in one way because we're starting to try to develop that. But I think it's bad in another way that it... It took something big like that to develop, start developing that. Hey, we're supposed to be family members and loved ones and have people we can go to and talk to and confess our sins to and, and trust that it's not going to be on the 9 o'clock news later. Right? That's, that's what the community of, of believers is supposed to be about. And two weeks ago at their love feast, it was that, that was what it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be that every week when you come in here, whether or not we're doing a special service or not. So if you can't forgive and let go of some of those things, then it's hard to build relationships with people and, and to let yourself be vulnerable again. That's one reason why it's so important to forgive. But if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. 
This is one of those passages that's scary to me and that we don't ever really think about. So if I'm holding a grudge against someone and I'm wanting evil for someone and I'm wanting destruction for someone deep down in my heart because they've wronged me. There's not a lot of passages that, that give you this cause and effect in the Bible that scare me more than this one. I'm going to God and I'm wanting to be forgiven for my sins. Father, forgive me. And a lot of times we, we're like habitual sinners, right? Because we keep doing the same things over and over again. We keep going back for asking for forgiveness. But what this passage is saying is that you can't hold a grudge and a grievance and hatred and want evil for someone else and expect to go to the altar and ask for forgiveness. Think about that at work this week. Think about that when that person that you are aggravated by or that gets under your skin or, or that you're holding a grudge so you see them this week. Think about that for a moment. And at some point, you can get to a place. Now, I, I've always been very honest and open with you people, but at some point in your life, you know, as a young child, I was abused uh, by a family member. And it took a long time to get to the place of being able to say, I release this person. But I tell you what, it was one of the most freeing things that's ever happened in my personal life. And that is just the truth. That's why it's important to forgive those that uh, sin against you. Jesus is praying for you right now. Romans 8 reminds us that Christ Jesus, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and also interceding for us. Imagine that. He's interceding for you. And he's calling you to be that to this world and to this uh, community, that you would be the same as he was, the forgiveness, that you would be a light into the world, that you would love those that persecute you, that you would love those that sin against you. And what does he say? They would know that you are mine by their love. Let's bow our heads right there on that point. Father, this morning, very simple service, a very, a very simple message, a very simple sentence. Forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Lord, but sometimes even the most simple passages in the Bible are hard to live. Lord, I pray this morning that you would give us the strength to live your word to live it, not to read it, not to just read it, not to just know it, not to just memorize it, but that we live it in this place, Lord. And this week, remind us to live out your love to those who sin against us in our workplaces and, and that we would forgive like you forgave. With everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to give you this opportunity. If you have a one of those relationships at work or one of those those people in your lives that 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 you haven't been able to let go of a grudge or you haven't been able to forgive i want to give you that opportunity right now i would i would encourage you to write down that person's name on a card on a prayer card on type it in your phone whatever write it on the back of your hand whatever you have to do and then start praying daily for that person and it may start out with one type of prayer, but if you do it daily, after a while, it'll turn into another. It'll turn into a, a prayer of, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And they need your love, and they need your forgiveness. And I pray that they get it. So right now, if you have that person, write it down in your heart, write it down on a piece of paper. Just slip your hand up, and I'll pray for you right where you're at. And then we'll, we'll adjourn. Father, you see each one of these hands, and you know each name that's on our hearts. 
Lord, we pray right now that you would give us the courage to live your word and, and, and start praying through this steps of forgiveness to get through, Lord. That you would help us to love those that hurt us. That you'd help us to forgive those and set our hearts free, Lord, by doing this. This morning we pray that you would continue this week to remind us how to be your disciple. That it's not about having scriptures memorized and being able to spout them out at somebody, but it's about living your word every day and living every sentence. Remind us this week to live your forgiveness. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.